The Yakuza series is full of truly unique and memorable characters. From a catalogue of intimidating, ruthless antagonists that serve as epic bosses, to the many heroes that use their awesome fighting styles to serve the absolute smackdown on Kamurocho's violent residence. Not to mention all of the characters we grow to love through the wonderfully absurd sub-stories. These characters allow each Yakuza game to deliver a dramatic, soap opera-esque narrative in such an engaging, earnest way, even when the writing is sometimes inconsistent and absolutely ridiculous. As a long-time fan of the series with a YouTube community of insightful, passionate Yakuza fans, I thought this would be a fun gaming conversation to have. No doubt many of you will disagree with my picks or the order of my choices, but that is exactly what this is all about. Welcome to the gaming conversation, as today we discuss my top 5 favourite Yakuza series characters. We make regular gaming critiques, discussions and opinion pieces, like this one. So if you enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing. And without any further intermissions, let's discuss my top 5 characters from the Yakuza series. Okay, a slight detour before we delve into the top 5, but an important detour nevertheless. This wasn't an easy list to make. There are a number of different characters that I could have made a case for putting into this list, no doubt you'll tell me in the comments later. And this is a testament to the series, so before we discuss the top 5, let's see who narrowly missed out. I will also explain my criteria for picking them. Yes, it's not just because I think they're cool. Firstly, Takayuki Yagami and the characters of Judgment. I love Judgment. I'm so excited to play the sequel. The first game had some of the most realistic, well-written characters and relationships that I've seen in gaming. But Judgment, while still contained in the Yakuza universe, is so distinct from the other games in terms of tone that I felt it was unfair to include these characters in today's video. The Yakuza characters are generally speaking larger than life figures, whereas the characters in Judgment feel more realistic besides the crazy kung fu feats of Yagami. So that is the first big omission. What other notable names have narrowly missed out on the top 5? Shun Akiyama is a big one for me, that I very nearly included. Amongst the 4 leads in Yakuza 4, and 5 in, well, Yakuza 5, Akiyama stole the show. His selection of speedy kicks, cool bravado, and philanthropic nature all made me instantly like his character. Unfortunately, he is a character that makes a strong initial impression but I feel just doesn't get the same level of development as the characters in my list. Whilst he might be one of my favourites based on first impressions, his role is by far the smallest of the leads in Yakuza 5, and in 6 he is completely neglected as a character. I want more of Akiyama, and I feel confident that if he got more attention, perhaps a spin-off please Sega, he would definitely make this list. Another character who I nearly included was Ryuji Goda. Out of all the Yakuza antagonists, Ryuji Goda is for me the most badass. His design is distinct, and his sheer presence makes him such a memorable foe. Sadly, I feel Yakuza 2 spends nowhere near enough time developing him as a complex character. Yakuza 2 absolutely excels at demonstrating how much of a sheer force he is, and the respect between him and Kiryu, even when they want to take each other out, is a fun dynamic. But again, aside from a fun sub-story in Yakuza 0, Ryuji just doesn't get enough time or development to make the list. This was a tough one, and I imagine for many he would be a fan favourite antagonist. So you might be thinking, hey Michael JH, did you not include a villain in this list then? Are you mad? Oh I did, just wait and see. There is one more character I nearly included. No doubt, I'm sure many of you will know other big exceptions, but for me, these three mentioned, as well as the cast of Judgment, were the closest to making the top five. Akira Nishikiyama. After not including Ryuji Goda, you might have thought Nishiki would have been the obvious other choice for villain. He certainly, for Yakuza 0, gets a great amount of character development. To be quite honest, if we were just including Yakuza 0, Nishiki would absolutely be in my top 5, but we are not. Controversial take here perhaps, I hated how Nishiki was characterised in Yakuza Kiwami slash 1. I played Yakuza 0 first, so perhaps I am a bit biased here. I think the bond shown in Yakuza 0 between Kiryu and Nishiki is amazing. The banter where Kiryu gets his suit, the dramatic screams and tears of Nishiki in the woods, and their later team up against the Dojima family are all excellent examples of the complex relationship between these two Kyodai. 
I don't want to turn this into a Nishiki character critique, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually, but I feel just that it's an almost 180 in Yakuza Kiwami, and it feels so unnatural. His sudden anger and hatred towards Kiryu doesn't make all that much sense to me. I know the game does try and explain his change in temperament, which is fine, but his attitude and actions towards Kiryu just don't feel authentic or realistic based on how he was developed in Zero. I think this is in part made to look worse by the changes in Zero, but even still, in terms of canon, I just don't think this development is done well at all. Whew. So there are some of the names that narrowly missed out. Let's get into the fun stuff now, as I justify my top 5 Yakuza characters. This is sure to cause debate. I mentioned earlier that there was another character, not Nishiki, not Ryuji, who I considered to be the best Yakuza antagonist across the series. Daizaku Kuze, one of the three iconic Dojima lieutenants that contribute to the brilliance of Yakuza 0, is without a doubt one of my favourite characters in the entire series. Kuze absolutely personifies what it means to be an antagonist. He is a constant, insanely relentless threat throughout Yakuza 0. Of course, this threat manifests in many crazy, testosterone fueled battles between him and Kiryu. Just that whole motorbike sequence, man, honestly. Their many battles are so important in helping develop Kiryu's character, and, at the end of the day, his legend. Kuze indirectly teaches Kiryu what it means to be Yakuza. He isn't your typical villain who wants to take over the world or hurt people just for the fun of it. He is a man who is so staunchly allied with Yakuza ideals. And whilst this doesn't make him a good guy, quite the opposite in fact, it does make for a really interesting character that would fit perfectly in just about any gangster story. I think great villains often parallel the hero in some way, and with Kuze, his constant struggle to best Kiryu is something that reflects how Kiryu behaves throughout the rest of the series. Despite the odds, despite the insurmountable mountain of Yakuza villainy that Kiryu has to climb in every single game, he still pushes forward. In the same way, you might think that after losing to Kiryu in literally the first chapter, and bringing shame to the Dojima family, Kuze would just fade away. But he doesn't. He keeps pushing on, evolving his tactics and methods to try his best to defeat Kiryu. Kudos to his voice actor, who also lends his likeness. You can tell he has plenty of acting experience. His voice immediately gives such a presence to his character, adding the superb writing in Zero that trumps the rest of the series. And all of this contributes to creating such an iconic antagonist. Coming in at number 4, Pipe Bomb. This is probably the major surprise selection, no doubt going to cause some interesting discussions in the comments. Karu Sayama, introduced in Yakuza 2, or in Kiwami 2, and quickly shoved away in Yakuza 3, a damn travesty that, is in my top 5 Yakuza characters. No, not Haruka. In what is objectively speaking, an incredibly masculine, macho men dominated series, Karu's presence in Yakuza Kiwami 2 was a refreshing change of pace. Unlike other female characters in the Yakuza series, who tend to take the role of damsel in distress, Sayama is an absolute badass and crucial part of Yakuza too. I think as much as I love the Yakuza series, it is a fact that, unfortunately, female characters have been treated far more inconsistently than their male counterparts. This does seem to be changing recently, however. With Sayama, this wasn't the case. She is just as important to the story of Yakuza 2 as Kiryu, if not more so. She has her own goals, motivations, and is able to act independently. No, she doesn't beat Ryuji, unlike Kiryu, but she is a strong, well-written female character with actual agency. She doesn't exist purely to serve as a plot device like Park or Yumi. It also helps that she has genuine chemistry with Kiryu. They pair off so well together, and her going from hostile to developing feelings for him feels organic. Their date scene in Osaka is just so well done, and it puts Kiryu in a position we rarely get to see, genuinely happy. I think one of the signs of a great character is the effect that they have on other characters in the story. Sayama highlighted a new element to Kiryu's character, a romantic, vulnerable side that we had seldom seen before. Crucially, however, she still stands alone as a strong character in her own right. It is this added element that distinguishes her from the other love interest in the series. Also, having a team up heat action with her, super cool. In a world of villainy, street fuggery, and Mr. Libido, 
One man stands out as a shining force for good. With two fists, godly power, and incredible karaoke skills, Kazuma Kiryu is an iconic character. Now, I already have a video where I discuss this character in depth, which you can check out here if you haven't seen it already. So rather than discuss why I love his character so much, I think instead what we'll do is look at why he's third on the list rather than first. Considering that Kiryu is the most prominent character throughout the series, you might think that would almost guarantee him top spot. After all, most of the iconic, memorable moments, fights and memes even have Kiryu involved in some way or another. So why then is he only third on my list? Well, I touched on this a bit in my video specifically about him. He isn't really a complex character. As much as Kiryu is an iconic name, an absolute legend, compared to the top two spots, I just didn't find him as interesting as a character overall. This wasn't an issue for me. Kiryu serves his purpose well, being the awesome and fun lead, whose unrelenting commitment to doing the right thing often gets him reeled back into the world of Yakuza. His character is effectively a catalyst for story events that then enable us to experience other interesting characters in each game. He is the flagship lead, but as so often is the case in stories, games, and all other sorts of media, the main hero isn't the most interesting character in the series. This isn't an issue for me when there are other characters around the lead who are absolutely fantastic, and so you don't have to rely solely on the main character to make the story interesting. This is absolutely the case with the Yakuza series and with Kiryu. To be fair to Kiryu, any series lead would have a tough time ousting either of the next two characters from their top spots. Majima's iconic battle cry is hilarious and so memeable. If you've never played a Yakuza game but seen a meme or short clip, chances are Majima is involved. From a pure entertainment value, Majima is probably the best character in the series without a doubt. Much like with Kiryu, you might be thinking, surely Majima should be top. And I imagine across the board, that is probably the most common answer. You see, the greatness of Goro Majima cannot be understated. He is a character that throughout the series has grown to be increasingly more complex. What started out in Yakuza 1 as a bit of a one-note antagonist has evolved into a multi-layered anti-hero who carried arguably the best Yakuza game in Zero. From a gameplay standpoint, his combat styles are a blast. I even prefer them to Kiryu's, and well, narratively, he just captures your attention whenever he's in the scene. Again, like Kiryu, I have a video where I speak about him in much greater detail. Unlike Kiryu, however, and contributing to why he's placed above him, Majima has excelled in so many different roles throughout the series. From simply comic relief, to antagonist, to ultimately a tragic hero, Goro Majima is a versatile character that progressively shows new shades of his nature to the player. He is just generally speaking such an interesting character to explore. So, I guess the question is then, why is he not number one? Well, for a while he was, and when deciding between him and the other person who did get placed at number one, there was one factor that brought Majima down ever so slightly. Yakuza 1 strikes again. Much like with Nishikiyama, I found picking up Yakuza Kwame to be incredibly jarring after Zero. Majima as a character in the main narrative has so clearly been written with just villainous intentions. He isn't really compelling in Yakuza 1. He really just is, in my opinion, a crazy bad guy who regularly endangers civilians and kidnaps Haruka for God's sake. Now, the Majima Everywhere system implemented in Kiwami does help lighten his character somewhat, but even still, this characterization feels so alien to what we see in Zero. Now let me be clear, I know Majima does embrace the Mad Dog at the end of Zero, but he is still the same person deep down, beneath all those layers. The problem I have with Yakuza 1 is that it's clear at the time this complexity wasn't there. He wasn't written to be this complex and interesting like in subsequent games. In the later games, especially looking at Yakuza 4, he is much more subtle, sans Majima construction. And while still absolutely Yakuza, there is more nuance to his character. For me, Yakuza 1 and Kawami's characterization of Majima feels so inconsistent with how he is throughout the rest of the series. And as such, it slightly brings his character down for me. Even still, he still claims second place, and about a year ago he would have definitely taken top spot. But then along came a brilliant new character. Replacing Kazuma Kiryu was never going to be an easy feat. Being the main star in six mainline games and a number of spin-offs, Kiryu is Yakuza. And him leaving the series, at least as the lead, was always going to leave 
a massive void to be filled. Well, Yakuza Like a Dragon introduced a new man to carry on the legacy of a great hero. Ichiban Kasuga is my favourite Yakuza character. Ichiban Kasuga might just be my favourite JRPG protagonist of all time. If you didn't get it already, Ichiban Kasuga, he's freaking awesome! And he's only had one game. I'm truly grateful for the void that the writers had to fill in the absence of Kiryu. I'm also grateful for this series growing popularity in the West. Both these factors have clearly led to so much time and dedication being spent on creating such a brilliant, complex and lovable lead. The excellence of Ichiban's character feels like the result of years and years of different games, attempts at new leads and even some misses. I don't intend to spoil too much about Yakuza 7, in case anyone still hasn't played it, go do that right after this video, but in just the first few hours, the writers already give such a strong sense of who Ichiban is, his backstory and what would be his main motivation that would carry him throughout the rest of the game. Early events in Ichiban's life allowed for me to empathise with him, to see him fall to rock bottom and then try and rise again made me so invested in him as a character. As a personality, Ichiban feels like a combination of some of the best traits of Kiryu and Majima. He has a heart of gold and is always looking out for others, but he also has this edge to his character, this wild side that distinguishes him from your average JRPG hero. Ichiban's infectious enthusiasm and positive outlook on life makes him so damn likeable, and his obsession with Dragon Quest and being a hero, whilst potentially corny, instead feels inspiring because of the excellent voice acting by the same actor who voices Nishiki. In just one game, you get to see so many different elements to his character. In a game that has such a brilliant supporting cast of party members alongside him, Ichiban doesn't fade into the background. He stands alongside a strong cast as the best lead in the series to date. And when I say that, there is no hesitation or doubt that in my opinion, Ichiban Kasuga is about as close as you can get to the perfect Yakuza protagonist. He is the kind of character that's going to help bring new fans into the series. And as I said before, this is just after one game. Man, I cannot wait to go on another adventure with Ichiban and the gang. Well, there it is, everyone. That was my top five Yakuza character tier list. I'd love to know what everyone thinks in the comments. What do you agree with? Who can't you believe I left out? What would be your ranking and why? I reply to just about every comment I can, so let's continue the conversation down below. Once again, thank you all for tuning into the game and conversation. If you enjoyed, a thumbs up, subscription, and all that would be really appreciated. I've been Michael JH, and man, the Yakuza series really has some great characters. Peace.